Hi everyone, I'm Gaurav Pandey or Gaurav Bahia and in this particular video, I'll talk about coding question that already has been appeared in Cognizant exam. From this particular video, you will have a good understanding what level of difficulty Cognizant asks, first thing. Second, how you can attempt the problem statement in the Cognizant and what are the common mistakes that you should not do while writing the code. Okay, so let's begin with the video and I hope the energy is high for everybody. Cool, yeah. So now we'll read the problem statement because that is the important thing. Whenever you, you know, start with, yeah, why I'm not getting this? Oh, okay. So now I'll just come back here. Cool. So now this is the problem statement that we'll read here. The problem statement they have mentioned, you want to buy a particular stock at its lowest price. Cool. And sell a letter for its highest price. Now this is what everybody want to do. Even I want to do, but how to do it here? That is the problem. Since the stock market is unpredictable, you steal the price plans of a company. Okay, so now for this stock for the next end day. So somebody has stolen somebody has stolen the, the pl price plan of a company for buying a particular stock for end day. Cool. Find the best price you can get to buy this stock to achieve the maximum profit. So we need to find that best price where we can buy this particular stock. To achieve the maximum profit okay means the lowest price right so they're telling like initial price of the stock will be zero so now the thing is that a lot of people make a mistake because they do not take a correct input so for understanding the input which is also one of the crucial part while writing the code because only then your code can be evaluated properly right so here in the input the first thing they have mentioned you will have n number of days cool second thing you will have array representing change in the stock price of for the day cool yeah so that is representing an array Third thing, third thing we will have what? Your uh, third thing will be nothing that will be the output. Your function must return best price to buy that stock. Means best price, means the lowest price obviously, right? The lowest price. So basically this array what it contains? It contains the few, few values related to the stock. But what are they? Are they prices or they are the change? So once you'll go back and read the problem again, you'll understand they are the changes. Look at this. Array representing the change in the stock price, not the stock price. They are not the stock prices. So you cannot find the minimum value directly. Right? They are the changes in the stock prices. You understood? Cool, yeah. So now the starting price was zero. Basically, stock starts from zero price. Then it has been dropped by 39,995. Cool. Further, it dropped by 17,136. Cool. Again, it has been dropped by, not dropped, it has been increased by 35,466 again it has increased by 21,820 and again it has been decreased by 26,711 so what will be the best price so on the day zero you had price at zero on day one you had minus 39,995 again on day two you had the sum of these two things that will be minus 57 0, 0, 0.93 and again the third day you will have the sum but that definitely will be higher than this price higher than this price so this will be higher yes or no again because the price is increasing again this price will be higher than this lowest value again if you will add minus 26 in this higher value again that will be the higher thing than this so you will have the lowest price on day 2 as minus 57 0, 0.93 right so if this time you buy this particular stock you will have the maximum profit I hope you understood the problem statement. The one way is possible that you have an array where you get the sum of each value. Right? You get the sum of each value and then you find the lowest value. But they will take an extra time complexity of big of uh, big of n, right? You are taking an extra data structure. But that is not even required. You can have a minimum variable, there like minimum value variable that there you store the minimum value. At a starting, your current and minimum value can be zero. Then you'll check if the up upcoming sum reduces the value the current value then we can update our minimum yes or no and if the next upcoming value is also reducing the value then we can again update our minimum value and at the end we will have the minimum value so that is the simple logic right? that is the simple logic so here in the code you can write a code in any language that up to you but the thing is that you need to understand how you take the input so basically in java basically in java we take input with the help of scanner class okay and now here we will have the size of the, the number of days means the size of the array actually 
and again once you have the number of days you will create the same as array so you have created an n size array cool then you will take the input from the user for filling that particular n size array for getting all the input so you have you have your array you have n number of days now you can call a function that can give you the lowest value so we have called a function find best price that we have called here by passing our array changes so here we have that array right what we will what we are doing we have a current price that is zero and the minimum price is zero so what you will do you will get the value one by one from the price changes array right and you'll keep adding that particular thing to the current price but if that current price becomes lower than the minimum price we'll update our minimum price at the end and here we are using a for each loop and every time whatever the value is coming we are adding to the current price right so at the end you will have the minimum value in your in your where in your minimum price thing and at the end you return this thing right and you will have out you will have output as the, whatever we have done in a dry run this minus 57093 uh, right i hope that this is quite clear to everybody but what we have learned from this problem statement not only the solution but the way first you understand the problem statement then you have a proper way like an algorithm way then you will try to use the code right you know understand what data structure you want what logic you want only then you can write the code so that's what you have to figure it out in the exam as well cool yeah now now the next problem statement that is also a previous year a uh, question that they have asked in their exam so now victor has an array of size n cool yeah cool victor he loves to play with these n numbers so there is a victor who have a size of an array right so now in this year here you will have few numbers cool yeah each time he plays with them he picks up any two consecutive numbers so we'll pick any two numbers any two numbers okay randomly cool yeah and adds them he will add them on adding both numbers it cost him k so when he will get the addition of these numbers he will that will be a cost of k find the minimum cost of adding all numbers in the array so means all numbers in the array you need to find the minimum cost so basically what is the thing is that uh, you need to find the minimum cost so the minimum cost formula we have mentioned for the cost is that k multiplied by the sum of the both numbers so you can find let's understand the input specification first then we we'll understand the solution the logic right so they mentioned in the first input you will have the size of the array that is n cool again in the second input you will have the elements of the array that you have cool again the third thing you will have the value of the k you will have the value of the k so this is the thing so you need three input for having that value here one way is that you sort this particular array then you find out two lowest value get the sum right because you will have the minimum cost only when you have the minimum sum right if the sum is higher the cost will be higher as simple as that so every time you want a minimum sum only then you can have a minimum cost right so you, if you want a minimum sum you want to find the minimum element so the thing is that if you are performing something you have an array so every time you are taking out two input the two values from that array and again the minimum value right and that is only possible when the array is sorted so again you get the sum you push it back uh, back again to the array and then again sort it so every time you have to perform n log n time complexity for sorting that particular array but that is not a good way then what is the good way think about a data structure that already gives you the top value as minimum so now if you have a understanding of data structures you will say this is the minimum heap or we can say priority queue so the peak value is always the lower value peak value is always the lower value so which means that if i can convert this particular thing into an array like into an priority queue so what will happen the lowest value will come on top other value will be stored in random bin so i don't care about them so we will have this right so now what will happen i'll take out two values so once i pick out one value that is one cool now then then what will happen this because minimum value come on the top so two will come on the top anyway right and another value i have two so one plus two becomes three one plus two becomes three now what i will do i'll get the cost what will be the cost tell me the cost will be this three multiplied by k So three multiply by k k is two, so that becomes six. For getting the sum of these one and two becomes the cost we get three. Now what you will do? You will push this sum back again into this priority queue, so you will have this thing. You will have this three you have inserted, so you have this another priority queue. So now what will happen? You will take out the both the values outside, and you will have the sum three plus three becomes six. Yes or no? So now you have value at six. You have value at six. What will be the cost? The cost will be the previous six plus this new sum. Multiply by two means twelve. So this overall becomes eighteen. Yes or no? The overall cost becomes eighteen. And why you stop? Because now if you push back the sum again into this queue, you will have six only. You have single element, not the both element. You don't have two numbers. 
that you can continue the process that there will stop so basically now the ideology is that we will have a priority queue we'll keep doing this process like taking out two value from the priority queue getting the sum right finding the cost and adding with the previous cost right until unless that priority queue becomes a size of one right so now you're cool we'll keep doing this full so now here we have a code we'll take the input the first time we're taking the size of the array second time we're like we were taking the input from the user into the array but before that we have to create an array so here we are creating an array and from here we are taking the input from the user cool now now the third thing is that we are taking the k the k value from the user cool yeah then we have once we have all these values so we are passing our value k and that array into a method that will give you the minimum cost cool yeah so here i have this priority queue understood now what i will do i'll convert who, all the array value of mine into the priority queue with that offer method so i'm adding that into the queue cool now at initial i'm i'm assuming that the total cost will be zero and we'll keep doing that process until unless our queue becomes of one size means if this is greater than one we'll keep doing that same process and right? because we have more than two elements or two or two more than two right so what you'll do you'll get out two value you'll pop out two values so you with the help of your pool method you are getting the two value out of from that particular priority queue then you are getting the sum you are calculating your cost and adding in the previous cost adding in the previous cost look at this adding the previous cost right and once once you have the cost you are adding your sum into the queue back again right this process will keep running and the time will come when your this pq means the priority queue size will be one right means you have single element then you will stop then you will stop and you will return your total cost that is that is whatever it can be right in our example it was uh, it was what it was 18 so we'll have that 18 i hope that this problem statement the solution is quite clear to everybody and now now the thing is that because exam is very near by you so what are the resources that you can have first resource you can try top 100 not out question from prepista.com a free resource okay a free resource that you can try the first thing i'm showing you what are they so if you'll search on the google uh prepista prime top 100 codes so you'll get this you'll get this so this will give you a complete understanding of like the solving the problem okay so we'll have everything from here itself now the second thing is that if you want a dedicated preparation for the cognition itself you can use this prime you can use a course on the prevention prime you can search prevention prime cognition course you'll get a window right and from there you can watch this particular course cool yeah now the third thing is that i am also running a lead code series on the youtube so that series where I'm covering is to medium level problem statement. So that is also a level of the cognition. So that may, may help you a lot. So you can search in the playlist. You can gain, go to the, the playlist. You will have the lead code series. 150 days lead code series. There I've covered already 40 to 45 questions. That will help you a lot. Cool, yeah. So this is what from my end. And I hope you will do really well in the your coding exam or interview. See you in the next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye.